Szanowni Państwo, nazywam się Anna. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Anna Wójcik and I'm happy to welcome you on Sunday debates of the Freedom Games. This debate will be on the condition of the rule of law in Poland in 2020. I'm going to present the panelists, the Commissioner for the Pro protection of civil rights, Mr. Adam Bodnar, Kamila Gasiuk-Pichowicz, who is an MP, Professor Anna Trella, who is a professor at the University of Łódź, and Professor Sadurski, who is a professor at the University of Sydney and University of Warsaw. The book by Professor, uh, by professor Sadowski was published in 2018. It was published by Oxford University Press, and this year, uh, it was uh, published by Liberté, and it will provide the basis of today's consideration. Since 2015, uh, Poland has uh, suffered changes in terms of courts, uh, problems between uh, executive, uh, judicial, and legislative authorities. So uh, at which stage uh, are we with these changes in 2020? So since 20 the 22nd of October, we are talking about the role of the Constitutional tribi Tribunal in, the, in this new system. So, Professor, the floor is yours. Uh, I would like to thank uh, the publishers, the Liberty Foundation, for publishing the book. Uh, I would like to say thank you to Anna Wojcik for great uh, translation, for great cooperation when uh, I was updating the book. There are various, there is a catalog of terms used to describe such systems as the system we have in Poland. We hear about non-liberal democracy, so on the one hand we've got free election, on the other uh, there is no guarantee that the rule of law will be maintained, but this is an oxymoron. Uh, Democracy has to be based on fundamental rules and freedoms, and any other um, systems cannot be regarded as democracy. We are talking about a hybrid uh, system, but it's uh, not uh, clear enough. The hybrid, it means that uh, this is this kind of a system to a lesser or greater extent. And we have observed in Poland that we neither have a stable, consolidated democracy, nor despot full despotism. So in my opinion, to define the system we are witnessing is authoritarianism, populist authoritarianism. So these two terms, are important in this uh, name and they play different roles. This is an authoritarian system because in the Polish system we are already lacking two fundamental requirements for the democracy. We are lacking uh, the real uh, division of authorities. So there is dispersed uh, authority that um, currently almost, almost the whole uh, authority Almost the whole authority is focused uh, in the hands of one party because if the leader of the ruling party uh, decides to, to leave his active uh, pub political life, uh, then we have no doubts that uh, uh, we, will, uh, we will have uh, the continuation in the ruling party. There is also another requirement uh, that is not met, that is the rule of law, that, uh, well, the, 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 the government is amending uh, the law, developing the law, but they are not, uh, they are only amending the law when some amendments are needed. Uh, they do not observe the constitutional uh, law, uh, so to, to change this law, to amend the constitutional law, some conditions, preconditions have to be met. So we have some democratic uh, elements, we've got some uh, democratic elements, there is free press, free election to a certain extent. This The, 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 the last elections uh, have been uh, fair to a certain extent. Uh, so we have noticed that uh, 
um, that actually lots of uh, the state resources spent to, to organize the election to meet the requirements of the government. So uh, there is no the rule of law. It's also a populist uh, system. Uh, I so populism can be perceived as a discourse uh, that concerns, for instance, xeno xenophobia. Or there is also populism uh, that is a kind of a social system to 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 meet the immediate needs uh, while ignoring structural changes and uh, providing public goods i mean the system related populis is populism uh, and the distinguished american cost Constitutionalist uh, uh, Samuel Saharov, uh, he calls this kind of policy as the uh, po policy uh, of, uh, of of the sudden uh, changes. So uh, the government is uh, uh, the, go the government is uh, expecting that if they want to introduce some changes, uh, they will demand institution to follow the order. So, for instance, we can consider courts. The courts should be independent uh, of the ruling uh, government. Uh, we should also have uh, the, uh, the the independent uh, institutions such as the, nas the national bank. So, either these are uh, these uh, entities. Uh, already follow the orders of the government, or uh, they are in the progress of adapting to the requirements of the government. So, so when we are looking at this kind of democracy, uh, we can see some leaders uh, that are taking quite a lot. Uh, and in Poland, uh, in Poland, the, the government wants to take everything. So this is why, also in my book, I'm writing about this. To me, this system in Poland is the uh, pop, uh, populist authoritarian system. So let's fo focus on one of the key institutions, that is the Constitutional Tribunal. I wanted to ask Professor Anna rakowska trella what's what is the role of the Constitutional uh, Tribunal uh, during the reign of, uh, of Jarosław Kaczyński's uh, government? Thank you for the question. I think to I think the answer to this question will be quite sad. Uh, I would prefer uh, to talk about a different role of the Constitutional Tribunal. Let's start. Uh, how the constitution perceives uh, this, this this body to use a simple language a constitutional tribunal is a body it's a judicial authority that uh, guards the constitutions it's a different context than that uh, that, uh, that 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 president's uh, role the president should also uh, guard the constitution but the tribunal is a court of law and it decides whether specific acts are in line with the constitution or not we can say that this is this 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 tribunal is a kind of a negative legislator regulator so the tribunal should uh, reject these acts these proposals that are not in line uh, with the uh, Constitution. So the tribunal should uh, remove, delete the rubbish, con uh, constitutional rubbish. So the acts that are not compliant with the constitutions, con constitution. Uh, how comes that the tribunal has uh, this this competence? Firstly. The tribunal or the judges uh, of the tribunal should be independent, and the constitution introduces some introduces some specific standards. A long term, uh, the judges are protected by the immunity uh, uh, that they receive remuneration, and they should be. Uh, not politically involved. Prof being professionals, this is another feature. Th th these people should be 
should be uh, distinguished lawyers. And the third uh, characteristic, uh, which causes quite a lot of problems, authority. The authority of the constitutional tribunal as the institution and the authority of the judges. So this authority should result from the professional attitude, from their personalities, and also they shouldn't be involved in the political dispute. So what have we got during the current situation? So only the constitutional regulation has remained. All the personality-related elements that should determine the authority of the tribunal, that the tribunal should be able to deliver its competence uh, without uh, any interference. This is no longer existing. So now it's time to answer the question so what happened to the tribunal after 2015? In my opinion, well, it has become a notary of difficult decisions of the government. Uh, the tribunal has become involved in the political disputes. It has also lost its professional nature. The government seem Probably the government is right. So the government uh, thinks that if there are some some blames concerning constitutionality, uh, that they should approach the constitutional tribunal, and the uh, tribunal will issue a verdict that will meet requirements uh, needs of the government, and that it will uh, eliminate social uh, disputes. So the authority of the tribunal will be used to emphasize the accuracy of the government's policy and its compliance with the Constitution. But I don't think it has actually happened, because the society has noticed that there is something wrong with the tribunal. It is uh, evidenced by the protests, protests uh, that have started uh, when the Constitutional Tribunal issued its uh, verdict, but the crowd didn't go to the tribunal. They went to the, uh, in, to, to, to the house of Jarosław Kaczyński. So the society has noticed that tribunal is no longer independent uh, uh, authority that uh, enjoys um, accountability and trust. So this authority authority has collapsed, so the tribunal is no longer the constitution, constitutional uh, tribunal. There are lots of controversial issues dealt by the tribunal. They are political decisions. So, for instance, it's a its term of, uh, of office uh, of the Commissioner for the Protection of Civil Rights. These are the problems of appointing judges. There were lots of uh, applications uh, uh, by, uh, by, by, by the National Council of Courts. There was also the issue of changing the dates of the election, presidential election uh, this year. We also had the competence dispute between the Supreme Court and the Parliament and, and, and President. So uh, these are all political affairs. So uh, we can foresee uh, what kind of decisions will be issued if they will be uh, if any decisions will be made uh, at all so the tribunal should really decide whether these acts are in compliance uh, with the constitution or not thank you unfortunately the protests have recently shown uh, how the irregularities of the Constitutional Tribunal could affect people's life. Uh, so my question to the Commissioner for Civil Rights Protection. Uh, if we have so uh, many doubts concerning the independence uh, of the Constitutional Tribunal, could European courts uh, come into rescue to help us restore the rule of law? Thank you very much for inviting me to participate in the discussion. I still have um, the opportunity to be uh, uh, in the position of the Commissioner for Civil Rights Protection, the Ombudsman, for two more weeks. Uh, uh, perhaps what I'm going to say will not be clear for uh, everybody, but I think that because this is Freedom Games, we have to explain at what stage we are 
when it comes to the proceedings in the European courts. First and foremost, it is important to to lead to the accusation of the uh, act in the European court. Uh, now uh, the European Union has passed to the stage of uh, explanation and they have two months to uh, express their opinion. Vera Jourova was in Poland in January and in the middle of uh, uh, November we are uh, on the stage when it is not when the, the when the case is not in the core of the justice of the European Union until the uh, constitutional uh, until the uh, court of justice of the European Union passes an opinion um, on the um, disciplinary chamber it still has uh, the right to uh, to um, issue its uh, sentences um, it applies to uh, Sanja, uh, to, to, to the court, to Mr. Justician or Mr. Uh, Tuleya, who are the judges. Furthermore, it uh, issues an opinion to cut the remuneration by half. In my opinion, it is not acceptable to interpret it in such a way that the temporary decision of the uh, Court of Justice is limited only to the disciplinary proceedings. It should be uh, interpreted in such a way that the disciplinary board should not uh, issue its sentences and uh, the application for fines uh, issued by the European Court of Justice should be imposed. The, the proceedings which are uh, in the court, European Court of Justice, we're going to have uh, um, we're going to have proceedings in front of um, the European Court of Justice, the media should focus on that. And furthermore, we should remember that on the 17th of um, December and in January uh, next year, the opinions shall be issued related to the uh, jurisdiction. The opinion of the general chairman confirmed the previous uh, judition of the European Court of Justice However, it seems that uh, a report should be uh, developed on the uh, arrest warrant uh, um, of the European arrest warrant. The number of cases which have been communicated to the Polish uh, government applying to the systems of proceedings uh, and re uh, depriving the judges of uh, their positions in the uh, National Justice Board uh, should be completed. This applies to uh, Judge uh, Tuleya or Judge Zurek. It is a perfect example of what is happening, uh, uh, issuing decisions. It applies to uh, to the decisions of the of the courts to adjudication. So we don't really know what the uh, Strasbourg Tribunal is waiting for. Talking about the disciplinary board of the Supreme Court, uh, the um, proceedings uh, should be carried out also by the European Court of Justice. We are also waiting for the decision of the Supreme Chamber. It took, the tribunal is aware of the fact that this is a, a very important system for the, a very important case for the whole uh, system. Nine months have passed uh, since uh, uh, the proceedings was carried out. I issue, I apply to the Minister of uh, Foreign Affairs and perhaps uh, it, they will issue the decision on the rule of law. We also need to remember that the problems with the rule of law have consequences for many people. The good examples are the, um, the sentences, the decisions of uh, related to LGBT. They will soon uh, go to the uh, Supreme Administrative Court. I, 
I don't have to uh, present the person of uh, Judge uh, Piebiak. If the uh, nomination procedure and the competition procedure is completed, uh, we'll soon have the situation when the uh, Supreme Administrative Court will no longer be independent. We are also going to have the visit paid by the monitoring uh, commission. The procedure, the commission should focus not only on the courts, but also on the uh, prosecutor's office and public media. It is about coming back to different recommendations of the Venice Commission. It issued the opinions not only on the uh, courts, but also special services, uh, prosecutor's office. Uh, they have been ignored, but we as uh, the people following um, what is happening in Poland should not forget about it. Thank you very much for the opportunity to deliver my speech. Thank you. Your presentation show that that since uh, that it it is as if we were writing a book about the constitutional fall of uh, uh, in Poland. We have so many actors and so many plots uh, that it's really hard to. Uh, to capture it and understand it, if you're even if you are interested in it. Question to um, Zgasiuk Pichowicz. Uh, uh, something has changed uh, because even people who are not interested in politics uh, went to the streets uh, requesting that uh, independent courts and the rule of law are restored uh, in Poland. Uh, the sentence of the Constitutional Tribunal on abortion showed to the people that this complex process affects their life and the sense of uh, dignity and safety uh, in the state in which they live. So my question is, so what uh, do politicians think about the mass protest? Because this is like uh, like a democratic uh, uh, uprising. We It shows that in Polish democracy, we have a lot of people who uh, have a positive attitude to the authoritarian populism, but also people who uh, require a different uh, form, uh, require democracy. What would you say? Thank you very much uh, for this question. Recent weeks have uh, clearly shown what extreme uh, political stance of the Constitutional Tribunal may lead to and what consequences it can bring. Uh, COVID is a perfect shield covering uh, the, limit, the attempts to limit citizens' rights by the uh, Lauren Justice. And they are doing it step by step. The pandemic is extremely dangerous, uh, not only for the, the life and health of humans, but also for Polish democracy, for the Polish uh, state of law. We are in a situation when um, our country is on fire, and in the meantime, law and uh, justice is stealing our democracy. We have seen it from the beginning of, pa of the pandemic. We have uh, had some amendments uh, implemented in the uh, criminal code. For instance, attempts to close people under home arrest. Uh, this was the idea of uh, Prosecutor uh, Jabro. We also uh, had uh, the um, male uh, voting, and then followed by the pandemic helped uh, the ruling party implement some actions of the disciplinary board. Many of uh, these uh, actions were accelerated, such as uh, the one towards uh, Judge Moraviet. Uh, next month, we are going to have uh, the hearing uh, referring to Judge uh, Tuleya. In autumn, uh, an attempt uh, has been made to take over the office of the Ombudsman, of the Commissioner for Civil Rights Protection. Definitely, we'll soon see um, a person appointed by law and justice in this position. Uh, the pandemic provided a perfect shield for 
Lauren Justice to use the tools they have been developing and building for um, many years. It uh, tried to reach into con the Constitutional Tribunal by issuing the opinions uh, that are then decided upon by the Constitutional Tribunal. For a few months now, we have had a flood of uh, applicants to the Constitutional Tribunal. Professor Trala uh, greatly summarized the role of the Constitutional uh, tribu Tribunal. I can see three functions that uh, the tribunal uh, fulfills. We have uh, heard about the money laundry, so I know this is like a mafia comparison, which uh, Professor Sadurski once suggested. We have all heard about the money laundry, and this comparison could be used in reference to the Constitutional Tribunal, because in the Current um, for in its current form, the tribunal has uh, become uh, um, the laundry of um, acts. So whenever law and justice um, has such a need, they can um, be sure that the tribunal would accept the act, which perhaps is not according to the law. The second role uh, that Jarosław Kaczyński has for the tribunal uh, is uh, related to using the tribunal uh, as the legal freezer for some uh, regulations. And it applies to uh, the Istanbul uh, Convention. Another role of the tribunal we have observed is the role of uh, Of the of the uh, Roland uh, Justice servant, uh, we have heard and we have seen the attempts to um, to change the uh, abortion law, and it was also done with the hands of the Constitutional Tribunal. So the last, so the last role. Of the legal ser of the legal mercenary uh, of the law and justice was uh, finally used. The politicization of the constitutional tribunal we have discussed here was like a clock bomb planted under the Polish state, and it was it, it exploded. Uh, on the 20th uh, of October, contrary to international obligations, regulations, laws, and acts. Contrary to common sense, Ms. Przyłębska uh, decided that uh, uh, Polish women are supposed to give birth to lethally ill children. It is like legal sadism. That's the way it should be called, because the state which uh, forces you to give birth to lethally ill uh, children is no longer a friendly state. It's a, this is a, the executioner, the torturer. There is nothing more uh, terrible than making the parents uh, th then depriving the parents the right to make their own decisions and making them look at uh, their ill children. The emotions have skyrocketed and reached its peak. Even the fact that the protests are um, organized in towns, in villages, show that this is not a problem of major cities. I saw in my region, in the Eastern Mazovsha, uh, several thousand people going to the streets. And this is the, the area of Poland where uh, the ruling party was uh, supported by the majority, by 60 or 80 uh, percent of the population. 
people who uh, previously were not interested in politics also joined the protest. They didn't uh, uh, go to the streets in defense of the Constitutional Tribunal in 2015, nor in defense of the courts in 2017. Kaczynski mastered the forces of the whole uh, generation of people born after 1989. This is the generation that he does not know, does not understand and does not respect. And this is the moment when the generation uh, experienced that a lack of democratic institutions will always end up with depriving them of uh, civil rights and depriving them of the freedom they love so much. I dare say that but not for the uh, epidemic. The participants of the demonstration could uh, uh, perhaps go to the streets in, in millions. Just to, to say, just to finish, I would like to say that uh, I often hear the question about how to solve the situation uh, caused by Kaczynski in relation to abortion. Um, regardless of what Ms. Przyłębska decided. This is not a, a sentence. Uh, this is a non-existing uh, sentence. So this is nothing to be published. And that's the difference between this publication and uh, the publication that uh, Ms. Szydło had not been doing for uh, months. As for the future and uh, opportunities for abortion, I am uh, in favor of liberalization of the law, and I think that uh, women should have the right to decide uh, according to their possibilities, opinion, uh, sensitivity, and conscience. So let's sum up some of the motives you have mentioned. Let's get back to Professor Sadurski. I would like to uh, ask you, uh, after the previous uh, speeches, uh, is there a kind of a turning point uh, concerning this authoritarian populism uh, in Poland, looking at their internal events, protests, uh, uh, and uh, cheekiness of the government and also we have this complicated and slowly moving internal domestic situation at the level of the European Union. Exactly, we cannot hear Professor Sadurski. I think that there is no turning point. I'm very skeptical uh, when, this, when it comes to describing the turning points because the, uh, since 2015, when uh, the anti-constitutional erosion started. Uh, I, I'm thinking about this uh, rightless uh, resolution of the parliament concerning the choice of judges for the constitutional tribunal. All the time we've been having turning points. All the time there are some uh, surprising uh, changes. Something that maybe a month ago uh, we thought that some some things cannot could not take place, but all of a sudden we discover that they are taking place. So in a way, we tend we attempted to normalize to ignore uh, these decisions because uh, some worse decisions are ahead. So let's not talk about the turning uh, points. Let's rather say that we have this uh, gradual erosion uh, when exposed. We are finding out that something really bad and toxic. Uh, occur, uh, took place which hurt the democracy. Everything you have been saying is very important uh, and this intensification of erosion has definitely taken place. Professor Bodner has reminded, reminded uh, the approaching verdicts uh, of the Constitutional Tribunal. There have been two complaints submitted by the European Commission, one concerning the disciplinary system and this decision is going to be made at the beginning of December. There is There is another complaint submitted concerning a law, the muzzle law, 
uh, to, to, to the, 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 the tribunal has uh, really uh, played uh, in accordance uh, with their rules. Uh, it wasn't very happy to do that, but they did it. So it will be very interesting what will happen next because the disciplinary system uh, is really the, the it's really the worst problem that is damaging the Polish uh, judici judicial system. And this disciplinary system uh, that has been adopted by the disciplinary chamber is really the worst thing. Another thing I would like to say concerning the Constitutional Tribunal, Professor and the MP uh, Gasiuk uh, Piechowicz, Piechowicz were ta talking about this. I just wanted to add something. Uh, after this uh, latest verdict, I prefer to ca call it a communication of the 22nd of October, we can see that this is not a fake uh, body, falsified body. It's a very active uh, body, uh, which is uh, which which is uh, which which has a lot of power. But uh, instead of limiting uh, the authority of the government uh, in 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 the context of infringing the constitution, well, this tribunal has uh, turned out to be a very enthusiastic helper of the govern of the government. But behaving in this way, when uh, the law and justice this uh, has uh, r really uh, made this body subordinate, uh, the, the, this party has hurt itself. Of course, the tribunal is very useful for the government to make hard decisions. I would call it colloquially to do dirty work, dirty job. Some, some politicians do not want to do uh, this dirty work, but that would only be effective if a majority of people would be convinced that the tribunal is a really truly independent uh, body of, of the government only then then uh, we would be able to blame uh, the tribunal, not the government. But we know that the government uh, made uh, the tribunal wholly, uh, totally dependent. So 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 the protesters uh, made this intuitive decision. They didn't go to uh, Shuha Alice where the tribunal is located. They were blaming the government. We've got seven minutes left, so I would like to address one topic. So 10,000 Polish judges uh, who in opposition of the judges of the tribunal, tribunal are very brave. So I wanted to ask uh, Professor Rakowska Trella how these judges judges can act now when the tribunal is uh, not dependent and uh, a question uh, concerning uh, uh, the type of support we could uh, provide to to the judges. That that second question has been directed to Kamila uh, Gasiuk Pichowicz and Adam Bodnar. We cannot hear Professor Rakowska. I will do my best. Mm. My mic is on, but I'm afraid we have a technical problem and we cannot hear the speaker. So we would like to have a brief conclusion. Yes, we can hear you. Please go ahead. We can say that now the burden of guarding the rule of law and uh, constitution uh, is on the judges. It's a, it's a huge uh, burden and responsibility. This is something that the judges have not been used so far. Of course, judges should follow the law and the constitution. 
as a rule, but in the situation uh, where um, the, the, the law is uh, not really very consistent, application of the Constitution is not a typical job for them to do. So the judges have this important task and responsibility, responsibility, and I think that for the past years, most of them have been doing it uh, very well. A great example is the, the court case. I have mentioned them when I was talking uh, talking uh, about the tribunals. So I'm talking about the district court in Warsaw when it filed in the year 2017 uh, a legal question to the tribunal. And it, this question was uh, frozen because the tribunal's uh, judges had no uh, agreement. And Ms. Przyłębska doesn't seem it uh, appropriate to resolve this uh, problem. So, so they, uh, so the judges refuse uh, applying the laws that are not compliant with the constitutions. We have seen it at the beginning of this year, and this tendency is persevering. Sometimes they have more problems, sometimes less, but they are doing it. There are also other cases. Uh, cases concerning the changing of names of streets, uh, a case on the decision of the president, uh, uh, president of the Council of Ministers. Uh, so these are important tasks, major responsibility. They have to be brave, but judges are not officials. Uh, the, the, they guard uh, this authority, and they have to meet up this challenge. So I'm happy that they are doing it, but uh, to be honest, this is one of their obligations. They have to guard the third authority. Thank you. Commissioner for the Protection of Civil Rights, one minute from me. Three items. Firstly, we have to be solidar with prosecutors and judges when they become the subject, the victim of disciplinary cases. So we have to be interested in these uh, cases. We have to fall on them. We have to support them. But it's also a task for journalists. Uh, journalists shouldn't say that, well, these cases are too complex, so it's too difficult to write about them, or they are no longer important. So let's put them in the 17th page of the paper. So if they have no support, the, the the judges will be losing their cases. Secondly, this is an issue of providing support to these lawyers, these institutions that provide support to judges and prosecutors. Uh, uh, I mean the Committee of Defense of Justice or the, the free courts organizations. They, they know how to do it. They are great at their jobs and they require, they need this support. And here I'm appealing to the lawyers. It's not only about earning money in your legal offices. You have to also fight for the rule of law. And then we have to to build relations with uh, foreign judges and prosecutors. Uh, there has been a change in the United States, so I think that the transatlantic relations will be stronger. So it gives us the feeling that judges and prosecutors uh, represent the job uh, that, that should be supported, and such jobs are done in the constitutional and uh, countries that follow the rule of law. Ladies and gentlemen, Well, it will take some time before we win uh, the parliamentary election. We know that this would be the most efficient uh, measure to help the judges who are independent, uh, the courts that are independent of the politicians. We have to protect them uh, against the repercussions, repercussions of the government. So this is the most efficient way. But we really have to win the election. But as I have said, we will have to wait for this for quite a while. But even now, we can continue and initiate new activities to facilitate uh, reconstruction of the democratic uh, of the institutions of the democratic rule of law. When we, when if I'm going to talk about the ongoing activities, we should provide our support to judges. We should monitor what is going on. We also know that the changes introduced by the Law and Justice Party were illegal. And 
everybody who appreciates the rule of law knows that you cannot use illegal means to achieve uh, some some targets so it's like a trap so there's a very specific area of actions using the international law so for example verdicts uh, uh, of the european court of justice verdicts on for example uh, the, the muscle law so we all the time appeal to the European institutions, to the European Commission to uh, introduce some, uh, some measures concerning this uh, Muzzle Act. So uh, we appeal for the fast response of the EU institutions to defend the law of Polish citizens. So issuing uh, issuing a verdict by, verdict by the European Court of Justice for the Muzzle Act, which is uh, so harming to the uh, judges. It will help us to prevent per, uh, repercussions against the judges. So thank you very much for your participation. So we can conclude uh, that uh, in this kind of politics, we need to remember that we should be interested in the rule of law uh, in the long term perspectives. Uh, five years have passed, we, and then we will have to rebuild the state of the rule of law. Uh, I do hope that we will analyze it more more closely and we will propose some